let's make sure we have all our supplies. Thank you, Friends of Hamilton, for providing the canvas, paintbrushes, markers, and paints. Now, if you don't have a kit, as long as you have paper and some paints, you can join us. Now, decide, are you going to freehand and draw your own llama? Like this guy who drew the Fortnite llama. Now, there's lots of inspiration on the internet. Hey, Mom, do I have to follow along with you on the painting directions? No, Carter. You can paint whatever you want. Cool. I'll go do mine now. Well, you go ahead and do that. But if you're going to follow along and use the stencil, you want to watch this tutorial. First of all, grab that graphite paper and choose a stencil that you want to use. The fluffy llama or the llama with the spiky hair. Place that graphite paper with the shiny side down onto your canvas. There are two sides. Make sure the shiny, glossy side is touching the canvas. Now, pick your stencil, stick it on top of the graphite paper, and tape it into place so it won't move. Now grab your pencil, make sure it's not too sharp, and you're going to trace the lines, the contour lines, that's the outline of the drawing. Now don't press too hard or you will puncture through that canvas. If that happens, it's okay, no big deal, we can cover it up with paint, but try not to press too hard. Moms, you may want to help the littles with this process. Now let's do the details. I like to trace from the outside in. I sometimes forget the smaller parts if I don't do that. So we're going with the nose and the little mouth. And then we should be able to just flip up that page and have our image transferred beautifully onto the canvas. Awesome. And hey, don't get rid of that graphite paper. I love this stuff. You can use it for all your projects that you want to trace or transfer images to. It's reusable over and over again. You can use it 20 to 30 times depending on what it is you're tracing. I love this stuff. Now you're going to want to trace the pencil drawing with the Sharpie provided. Now, if you did your own drawing, you're gonna follow the same steps. We're gonna trace with the permanent marker. That way we can see the lines. And don't worry, if you make a mistake during the graphite transfer or during the Sharpie part, Everything's going to be covered up with paint, so there's no mistakes, just happy little accidents that can be covered up later. You guys are doing a great job.
like I said, this part doesn't have to be perfect. If you made little mistakes or got some Sharpie somewhere you didn't want it to be, or maybe you didn't outline something exactly how you wanted to, it's okay because you're going to be painting this with acrylic opaque paints that will cover up all your little accidents. Again, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. After all. Okay, now you do need some napkins or paper towels in case you do have accidents. And did I mention you might wanna wear an apron or old shirt? Grab a paper plate and let's open up those acrylic paints. Now these paints are going to stain clothing. They're acrylic. You've got your primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. You can create all the colors of the rainbow just by using these three colors. However, in your package, you've got black and white and some neutral colors like gray and brown and beige. Hey, who are you calling neutral? Let's decide what we want our background to look like. Do you want it to be um, a solid color, maybe a solid blue or brown or yellow or an orange background maybe? Maybe you want to mix some white with it and create some texture. Or are you feeling more like a hippie dude and want a rainbow background? For this tutorial, I'm going to tone it down a little and do a turquoise textured light turquoise, dark turquoise background. So. Once you've chosen what colors you want for your background, you're gonna squirt onto your palette paper plate. Now to make turquoise, I took a light blue, some green, and a little bit of this, oh, sorry, blue, green, light blue, and I think some yellow and white. Now some basic color combinations are Red and blue will make a purple. Yellow and blue will make a green. Red and yellow make an orange. And then you can add white to any of those combinations to create lighter colors. Or you can add some a tiny, tiny bit of black to make a darker color. But whatever color your llama is going to be, you want to choose a background that will complement it. So if your llama is going to be brown, you probably don't want a brown background. If your llama is going to be pink, you may not want a pink background. So choose your background first. I always like to go with my background first. You want to work your way from farthest away from you to closest. So the thing that's the farthest away from you as an artist is your background. So we're starting with background. I think we're getting a pretty good turquoise here. A little aqua, but that's okay. I'll add some more dark blue. I'm mixing it up with this sponge brush. Now, if you have a knife or a paint palette, that's probably the way to go. But I'm only going to use the sponge brush for the background, so it's okay to use it to mix the colors. I'm gonna add some white, lighten it up a little. Now, I'm gonna start with just some basic back and forth strokes following the lines here of the llama. Carefully coloring in around the contour of the llama. Again, we're gonna paint that guy, so if you get a little bit of it inside the lines, it's okay. Now, I'm a little bit of a messy painter, and I like to make textured backgrounds. I like to go back and forth, side to side, all different directions with my brush strokes. I'm adding some turquoise, back and forth, back and forth. Little bits on the inside near the details. And we're gonna add some white now. Now, the white I'm going to crisscross, Messy, messy, messy. Just filling in that blank space. And I'll blend it a little more later. 
I make little X's with my fingers sometimes, back and forth, back and forth, as I'm painting. I think it gives kind of a cool texture, but if you would rather just a solid background, go right ahead. Awesome, you're doing a great job. Um, don't forget to do the mm. side and top and bottom of the canvas as well. Really just filling in that whole background. Take your time, there's no rush. You can pause this video at any time to work on that background or redo it. If you don't like the color you chose, let it dry, start over. That's the cool thing about paint is you can paint right over it. So now I'm going to add some dark blue at the top and kind of blend that into the turquoise. Um, when I'm blending, I kind of, I, I don't have um, a lot of pressure on the brush. I sort of lift the pressure up and, well, now the, thank you kids. Um, shh, these, <laughs> these parts right here um, where I'm going in towards his hair. I'm going to need a smaller brush, so I'm just going to kind of hang out and wait. I'm going to blend, blend, blend this darker blue um, with the turquoise and the white. Like I said, it's okay if you get a little paint inside the llama. Now this part right here where his hair is, um, that sponge brush would be kind of difficult to to paint with. So I'm gonna use a smaller, not a medium sized brush. Um, that way I can kind of cut into the areas that don't need, um, that need paint. Oh, hey, little llama, how are we doing? All right, so you see I'm just kind of painting in using smaller, lighter brush strokes, a little more detailed work. The smaller the brush, the better the detail. And blending and blending, And I'm just going to fill in and blend and keep blending until the whole area around this little tuft of hair is filled in. So everyone, keep working on their background at your own pace. Good job, Nolan. Nolan is, he prefers a smaller brush. And it's completely up to you, whatever you need to do to fill in your background. So I would love it if you guys have a comment right now um, while you're painting. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, um, go ahead down below, click a comment. When you're ready to clean that paintbrush, you need your water. You're gonna swish, 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 and tap, 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 tap that brush, and grab your paper towel or napkin and wipe. Grab it and wipe up. Don't scribble, scribble with it because that'll mess up your brushes. You want your brushes to last. So clean off that small brush if you want to and move on to that sponge brush again. Like I said, we're only going to use the sponge brush right now for the background. Sponge brushes are great for covering large areas to paint, but when it comes time to clean them, um, I think it's best to clean them under a running faucet, running water, squeeze them out, and then um, let them dry. So I'm going to finish up here, oh, little things up there. I'm going to finish up my background here. Um, some people uh, call this ombre, where it goes from dark to light. It's kind of messy, but I like it. It gives it a fun texture. 
Um, mine went from a darker blue to a turquoise to a really light turquoise down here. I'm just gonna finish up blending just a little bit. Blendy, blendy. And then I'm gonna let this dry. Guys, if you have a question, please, please, please comment. I am so happy to talk to you. Until then, let's let our paintings dry and let's look at some llama pictures. photo or have your parents post a photo to the Hamilton Junior High, Hamilton High School Drama and Art Club Facebook page and show us your progress. That would be super awesome. Oh, here we go. All right. It is time now to add some fur, some texture. Let's make our llama a llama now. Mine's dry, and I hope yours is. If not, please pause, 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 and come on back. So I'm gonna use this smaller brush. Um, I'm actually going to use a smaller flat tip brush and a smaller, uh, really, really small, tiny brush. I'm mixing some brown and some beige. These are neutral colors. Um, you could also use gray or pink or blue, whatever color you want your llama to be. I'm going to follow the lines that I drew, but not too carefully because I'm going to make my llama super furry and fuzzy. So I don't really care to follow these lines exactly. Now you can if you want to. Okay, so I'm mixing some white with my beige and brown and just filling it in. Now, if you want to keep your llama solid white, you might be thinking, why do I have to paint it white? Um, I guess you don't, but honestly, it looks better when the whole painting is filled with paint. I can, I can usually see the spots on a canvas that don't have any paint. So go ahead and just paint it white. You've got the white paint. So if you have a white llama, just fill it in and clean up some edges while you're at it. My sister who lives in the Middle East, she lives in Dubai and she's a teacher and her daughter is in first grade and she is joining us live as well. Hi Bella, this is my niece in Dubai. She is painting her own llama with her paints and her paper. Good job, you're doing a great job. I'm so excited you're here with us. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Okay, we have another live video sent to us. This is awesome. Doing a great job, Dawn, one of my buddies, helping her kids. All right, let's keep on. Um, for me, I'm gonna keep adding. Uh, I'm gonna keep adding fur to my llama. I'm mixing white and beige and brown. I'm just um haphazardly kind of adding all these colors, and if something's too dark, then I go over with white. If something's too white, I go over with dark. Um, no rhyme or reason, really, just trying to find a good balance, good texture for the llama fur. So you keep on going, keep on doing you.
So go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions or concerns, anything uh, you need to ask live, and I will certainly help you as best I can. Um, I'm just still just adding fur against the sides, um, a little dark, a little light. I'm just going to fill the whole little llama in with um, beige and brown. Again, it doesn't have to be beige or brown. It can be gray. It can be pink, purple. It really doesn't matter. This is your painting to do whatever you want to with. Okay, once you have filled out your llama fur, now it's time to do the details. So like I said, you move from um, the things furthest away from you to the things uh, closest to you. So the background, the fur, then we have the hair, and then we have the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So um, I'm putting the hair in here. I'm going to follow the stencil for a little bit. But I will probably stray away and uh, make his little mohawk a little crazier. I'm going to make it purple. Why not? Okay, so now his mohawk's purple. Gonna add a little more detail to his ears. 
I'm not really outlining it. I'm more of just um, adding like small little brush strokes with that tiny little brush that you were given. Um, because his ears are hairy and furry too, right? So I'm putting the darker fur on the outside as more of an outline. Um, and then I go around his ear, add some, <laughs> add a little more detail to his ear. Oh, let me go back and add some detail to his hair. Um, I could have just left it with the outline, but I don't know. Decided to make it a little crazier. Add him some crazy funny hair. Again, there is no right or wrong way to do this. Your painting is going to be so awesome because you are awesome and you are absolutely perfect and amazing. Like, you can add glasses, teeth, flowers. Honestly, be yourself. Celebrate your amazing, awesome self. Don't try to be anything else but yourself. We hope you will send us pictures of your finished project. We had so much fun painting with you. Thank you, friends of Hamilton. Thank you, Hamilton Bulldogs. This was super awesome. Have a great summer. We love you and goodbye.